Hello everyone, my name is Jesse Lawford. I'm the executive pastor here at Encounter Church and we truly have world-class ministry and we know that God is gonna do something through this message. So sit down, take notes and see what God's gonna do for you. Hey, what's going on Encounter family? So glad you got to join us right here and we've got a word for you here today. So here's what I want you to do before we dive in. I want you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button I want you to go ahead and mash that like button and follow us, direct message us, and let's just see what God can do in you and through you uh, through these messages. If you haven't had a chance, go back through our page here. Uh, Go back through uh, the Spotify playlist, uh, the Apple podcast list, and listen to uh, some of these messages. Our hope and our prayer is that they would impact you challenge you, and empower you for your walk with Christ. If you're brand new to the faith, maybe you're just checking this out for the first time to see what this is all about. Hey, I just want to say lean in uh, and just just have an open heart and an open mind and see what, see what can happen. Because I know personally that my journey with Jesus has changed everything, and I know He can do the same with you. Let's go ahead and dive into today's word. I'm going to bring our attention to an Old Testament book by the name of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, and we're going to read verses 19 through 22. And it says this, One day the leaders of the town of Jericho visited Elisha. We have a problem, my lord, they told him. This town is located in pleasant surroundings, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. And Elisha said, bring me a new bowl with salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring that supplied the town with water and threw salt into it. And he said, this is what the Lord says. I have purified this water, and I will no longer cause death or infertility. And the water has remained pure ever since, just as Elisha said. I want to title today's talk, uh, How to Heal from Drinking Bad Water. How to Heal from Drinking Bad Water. I, uh, I grew up in, in a city environment, and so I didn't have and do a lot of outdoorsy things. We would go camping from time to time, but you know it was a campground. We never did any of the um, kind of wilderness camping and all of that. We didn't do that, but we had a little camper, and we would go camping. And so uh, as a young person, I was... Uh, got to uh, participate in a youth camping trip. And we were out in the middle of nowhere in Yosemite National Forest. Beautiful area. And as a kid, I remember having everything packed and ready to go and, and taking all of our supplies and hiking through the wilderness and as we're going, you know, of course, I had a little canteen and, and all of that. And I remember drinking all of my water on the first day of a two-day hiking trip. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. I thought, hey, you know, maybe there's a spot we can fill up water. Maybe there's a stream. Maybe there's a... I, I just, you know, as a kid, you're not thinking through some of that. And so day two comes, and I am thirsty. And we're hiking back down the trail to, to, to where our cars were. And as we're hiking, there's this, there's this stream that is running. It's, it's a beautiful little stream that we had to cross And I remember getting down with my canteen, like thanking God that there is some water here. And as I'm going down to fill up my canteen, my youth pastor shouts out, don't drink the water. And for me, I'm like, why? It's water. Water is what I need. I need water right now. If I don't have water, I'm going to die. I need water. And my youth pastor's like, no, you don't know. There are there are things that can get contaminated in this water. It needs to be filtered. It needs to be strained. Like It needs to be boiled. You don't know because there may be animals that have, have uh, used that water for other things and what we would call it giardia, right? And so it can get in the water. It's bacteria. And, and while the water looks clean, there's things that are invisible in the water from somewhere upstream that is causing the rest of the water to become contaminated, to become toxic, to, to get, to, to ruin the flow. And so I remember as a kid thinking like, hey, water should be water. And then as I get older, I realize that, no, there are some sources that can cause the water to become toxic 
and contaminated. And that's what I want to talk about. This is the story that Elisha is dealing with right here. He's, he, he gets approached, and this is one of some of his first miracles he's ever done. Uh, Elijah, his, his predecessor, has gone on to be with the Lord, and now it is his, his turn, his responsibility to uh, help the, the people of Israel, to be the prophet for that time. And as he's doing this, the people come to him and said, we've got a problem. We've got an issue And they're like, the land is beautiful. Everything around us is gorgeous. However, the main source of our water, this is a life and death thing. The main source of our water has become toxic and contaminated, and it's ruining our health. It's ruining who we are. It's, it's killing our livestock, and it's, it's causing infertility with our women. And there's an issue with the water. And so Elisha now is approached with how to deal with bad water. So let me ask the question, have you, have you been around circumstances, situations, maybe even individuals where it seems like what they talk about may seem at the surface okay, but down the road you realize that it was actually toxic? Maybe you're dealing with a situation right now where, where you're looking back and you're like, if I hadn't been connected to that, if I hadn't gone with that, if I hadn't been with them, then, then maybe, maybe my life would be better. I got connected somewhere to something toxic. Maybe it's your own habits and own desires and things that have, have messed you up and, and you just keep repeating the same toxic habits over and over and over again. And you're sitting here today and you're like, I want to be free from that. I, I've been hurt by that and I need to be healed. And, and it's causing me to lose out on my future. It's causing me to have an issue with, with the present relationships I'm in. It's, it's causing me to have a problem with my spending habits. It's, it's causing me all kinds of grief, shame, and, and maybe even pain. And I want to help you today to remember that What you're drinking from, where you're getting your nutrients, what you are soaking in can cause you to thrive or can cause you to lose out. What you are drinking from, the sources that you are pulling your information from, your truth from, your perspectives from, the things that are in your flow of your life. And so what I'm talking about, let let me just break this down. Maybe it's your social media Maybe it's individuals that are on your page that are constantly feeding this thing. Maybe it's, maybe it's individuals you follow on Instagram that just, you, you look at it and, and they may not be toxic on the surface, but it's the constant pictures that are being posted and you feel in yourself a little shame that you can't live up to their standard of living. Maybe, maybe you're a parent and you're, you're seeing other people, how they're raising their kids and they're always going to ball games and they're behind their little league team and you're looking at all of their highlights and we get, we get our source from that and we're looking at it and we're like, why can't we do that? I don't have enough time in, in a day. I'm working two jobs. I'm, I'm fighting through all this and I can't spend that time like, like they are. What we're doing is we're drinking from a toxic source because it is the toxicity of comparison that's going to end up ruining the potential for your future. And so you can also sit down with somebody and they can just talk to you and unload about their day or their problems with somebody they're having or, or the relationships they're in. And on the surface, it seems like they just want help. They just want someone to talk to and just want a listening ear. But underneath the surface, it's casting doubt, it's causing confusion, it's, it's toxic. And so what happens is we end up drinking from that source, believing that I can help them or believing that I can help redirect them, but really it's actually poisoning our future. Maybe, maybe we're, we're in, that, in that environment and we're looking now and saying, help, I need to be healed from drinking some bad water. I've drank some bad water and now I need to be healed. And I've realized this is that Christians, our modern day Christians, our modern day Jesus followers are actually malnourished. We're malnourished. We, we have so many more resources at our fingertips. 
So many more services, so many opportunities. I mean, you're watching this, listening to this on devices that they didn't have years ago, but now you do. And yet, why are we malnourished? Why are we so sensitive, so easily offended, so hurt, so, so easily caught and moved away or, or blown about with every wind that comes around? Why are we so double-minded? Why? Because we're malnourished. And the reality is is that we're malnourished because we have a problem of where we're getting our water from. We were intended to get our nutrients from the gospel, and yet with all the information out there, the gospel has become smaller and smaller. And our own reasoning, our own understanding has been exalted and lifted up. And we have a gospel malnourishment problem because we've been drinking and getting our water from toxic sources. And you're sitting, watching this, listening to this today, and you're like, yeah, I've gone through that. I've dealt with this. I know that I'm dealing with the effects of drinking bad water. And you're like, well, am I a bad person? No, you're not a bad person. Your need is real. Maybe it's, it's this constant need for affirmation. Maybe it's a constant need for relationships. Maybe it's a constant need for uh, bettering yourself or a constant need. It's just constantly driving. Your need is real. But where you're trying to fulfill it is wrong. If you're trying to fulfill your need through another relationship with another person, That may be a toxic water source. If you're trying to fulfill your need for affirmation uh, from from other places and other sources, it it may be that you're getting it from the wrong wrong place. It's toxic. It's contaminated. You're drinking bad water. You're not a bad person. You've just had some mistakes. You've had some issues. You've had some bumps along the road. Your need is real, but where you're getting your source from, where you're getting your fulfillment from is wrong. You're not going to, your spouse cannot fill the same void that God can. Your kids cannot fulfill the same void that God can. Your your job, your career, your livelihood cannot fill the same void like God can. And so many times we put so much emphasis on that and our relationships and our activities and our vacations and our jobs and and all of this that we think that that's going to fulfill the void within us. And the reality is it will never fill the void where God is called to fill. And so if we consistently start drinking and consistently take from the source of toxic water sources, it's going to lead to the death of our purpose. And, and so you're saying, well, Elisha dealt with this. And yeah, the people needed to be delivered from it and they needed to be healed from it. And I've realized that, that the first thing we've got to do is we need to be delivered and healed. It starts with repentance. It starts with saying, God, have I had a bad attitude? Have I had a bad spirit? Has, has my heart become so contaminated from the toxic sources around me? Would you search my heart and know my way? God, will you forgive me of anything that I have, I have taken of or I have drank from or I have, I have done? Will you forgive me? And the Bible is so clear on it. It says if you'll just confess that, he's faithful and just to forgive us. But it starts with a realization that maybe I have turned away, and I need to repent. Maybe I need to, to, to figure out a different method, a different way of doing this, and I need to get realigned with God and, and find back, get back to the true water source. Because when you make the choice to fully turn away from those patterns, those toxic water sources, that's when deliverance starts. But you have to make the choice. It starts with your decision, your choices. No one's going to force your hand. You have to make the decision. The people of Jericho made the decision. Elisha, we've got a problem. Elisha, we've got an issue. And maybe, maybe that's all it takes for you to have that aha moment right now and say, I've got an issue. I've got a problem. I need help. I need Jesus. I need support. I, I need this. And, 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 it's, and it's, I'm not getting filled and I'm not getting fulfilled from these other things and I've searched it. All I'm finding is despair and emptiness and maybe even more tragedy, maybe even more drama, maybe even more issues. It's because we're drinking from the wrong source. 
No one's going to force your hand. The people of Jericho, nobody forced their hand and said, hey, if you don't get a hold of Elisha, you're going to have issues. No, they made a decision. We, we, we've got to get to the prophet. We've got to find where and how to get the help that we need. In fact, Jeremiah 2 and 13 says it like this, and God is having this conversation with, with Jeremiah, and he says, for my people have done two evil things. Two evil things, right? He says, they have abandoned me. That's number one. And he says, they have abandoned me, the fountain of living water. And two, they have dug for themselves cracked cisterns that can hold no water at all. Two evil things that are related to the water and the source. He says, they have left, they have abandoned me, and I'm the fountain of life. I'm the one who gives them the source of healing and hope. And they've abandoned me. They've turned their back on me. And then they've dug for themselves cisterns that are cracked. They, they're not fortified. They're not strong enough. And they're cracked cisterns and the water is leaking through them. And they're not able to even get water. They've abandoned me. And they've done it on their own. And it's cracked. And they can't hold it. The reality is, is that if we do not have the gospel, then we're never going to get the fountain of life. If we do not put our efforts back on understanding and diving into the gospel, we're going to end up malnourished. We're going to end up with cracked cisterns because that's our own philosophies, our own ideas, our own ways of doing things. And we we get so messed up with these and it's cracked. We can't even contain and hold the water that was given from the fountain of life. We need a revival of the gospel in our lives. The gospel is not a list of don'ts. It's not the gospel. See, in modern day Christianity, we have this understanding and this thought that the gospel is all about what I shouldn't and can't do. That somehow we have equated the gospel to a a way of life, a way of living. And so when, when we get to the place of trying to teach the gospel, we are very good at saying, hey, you shouldn't live this way, but you should live this way. That's not the gospel. The gospel is not a rule, rule book. It's not a list of restrictions. It's, it's not even a list of the right ways of doing things. The gospel is not about that. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's it. But we have lost the good news of who he is due to the fact that we're trying to match up, align, compare, and we're drinking from toxic water sources. No wonder we're malnourished because we have lost the gospel. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's it. The power of salvation, the power of God comes through the gospel, not according to what I do or don't do. That's not where the power comes from. The power comes from The gospel, and the gospel, the good news about the gospel is this, that it's for both the unbeliever and the believer. But suddenly, somehow, after we are saved, after we find Jesus, after we believe the gospel, somehow we decide that it's not that important anymore, that it's not not what we should be focused on. We need to focus on everything else, and we lose out on the gospel. And Paul repeatedly reminds the church, remember the good news that I delivered to you. Remember what you first believed when we gave you the gospel. Remember the good news. I'm shocked that you're turning away so soon from the good news that we once delivered to you, he tells them. Because we get to the place where we think that the gospel suddenly is just the entry level. The gospel is not just for the entry level of Christianity or following Jesus. It's for whosoever. It's for the believer and the unbeliever. Jesus says it like this in John 4 and 10. And a lady is coming to him. And Jesus is sitting on the side of a well. And as he's sitting there, this woman comes. This woman uh, has to come at a different hour of the day because she is she's not accepted with the other women. And she's coming and she has this conversation with Jesus. And she's asking him for water, for something to drink. And Jesus replied this way, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And she says this, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, 
And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. What is Jesus saying? Hey, you've had some toxic influences. You've drank from the fulfillment of all of these other guys because this woman, as we find in Scripture, he says, hey, go tell your husband about it. She goes, I don't have one. And he says, I know. (laughs) You've had five. You've had others. You've had them. And the one you're living with isn't the right one. And and, and she's looking for this fulfillment. He's like, you're drinking from the wrong well. You're drinking from toxic sources trying to fill the void within you. And there is no one else but me that can fill that void. If you knew who I was, you would ask of me and I would give you living water that would satisfy you with long life and you would never be spiritually thirsty again. This is the gospel. This is what is nourishing us. This is what is protecting us and providing strength and source. It's not a toxic source. It's coming from Jesus, who is the fountain of living water. And water, water, when I think of water, it's life, right? I can go, you can go a lot longer without food than you can without water. Water is life. It's refreshing. It's cooling. And it's cleansing. So when Elisha is approached with helping to heal the water, there was three things that he did that is going to help you heal from drinking bad water. Number one is this. He said, I want you to bring a new bowl. So number one, we have to bring a new one. A new one. We need to have a renewed mind every day, the apostle says. We need to renew our mind. It's got to have a new mindset. And we have to bring a new mindset to our situation a new perspective. Maybe you get so bogged down, you feel like you're in the foxhole of life getting shot at from every which way. You need to pray, God, would you give me a new mindset? Would you give me new thoughts? Would you give me clarity in this? Getting a new mind is like this. You need to take inventory of what thoughts are dominating your mind. Are they thoughts of self-harm? Are they thoughts of destructive habits? Are they thoughts of addictions that you have? Or are they thoughts of peace? Are they thoughts of good things? Are they thoughts of how can I serve others? Or are they selfish thoughts? Are they thoughts of how you can take revenge or how you can be manipulative? What are the thoughts that are dominating your mind? This is the first step. When you take inventory of what the thoughts are in in your brain, when you take inventory of it, it's the first step to renewing your mind. Because you're putting a pause. Why am I thinking this way? Go back to the source. Where is this thought coming from? Trace it back. Where did this begin? And why am I here? And if you can trace it back, then you can find the source. And Elisha says, bring a new one. Bring a new bowl. I want a new bowl. Bring one of those. Bring a new mindset. We're going to approach this differently than we've ever done before. That's why Ezekiel 36 says, From the Lord, he says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols. And I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit in you. And I'll take out the stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. When you bring a new mindset... God gives you a new heart and a new spirit. Did you notice what he did? The gospel, the fountain of life, this Jesus begins to cleanse you because water is cleansing. He said, I'll sprinkle that on you. When you come with a new mindset, I'm doing away with the old. I'm getting rid of the past. I'm stepping into a new season. Then God will give you a new heart and a new spirit. But you have to bring a new mindset. Number two, to, in order to heal from drinking bad water, Elisha put salt in it. You have to put some salt in it. Because I've realized this, that it's what you put in it that matters. Salt in scriptures is equivalent to truth. So you can have spirit, but if you don't have truth, like you've got to be able to put the salt in it. It's what you put in 
that matters. And I think, I think we're malnourished in this gospel conundrum in, in churches and in Christianity because we're more interested of what we can get out of church, what we can get out of serving, what we can get out of relationships, what we can get out of our family, what we can get out of our friends, what we can get out of our job. But that's not the reality, is it? It's not about what you can get out, but it's what you can put in. Your relationships with people, with God, with your family, with your spouse is going to get better when you stop looking at what I can get out of it and start realizing I have something to put into this. It's putting salt in the bowl. It's, it's taking it and Elisha throws the salt in to the water source. It's, it's what can I put into my relationship with God? What can I put into my family? What can I put into my church? What can I give back to my community? What is it that I can put in? And guess what? The water source will change. The toxicity, the contamination will change when you begin to realize it's, what, it's not what I can get out of it. It's what I can put into it. See, what's most wrong with, with our earth and, and this, this thing that we're doing is, is summed up like this. It's that we don't want God. We just want his stuff. We're not so interested in this connection with God. We just, we just want his stuff. God, will you give me this? Will you bless me with this? Can I have this? Will you, will you honor this? And, and we're wanting his stuff. We're not wanting him. And we end up choosing his creation over him being the creator. The apostle warns us in Romans about that. There's, there's, there's the day we're living in right now where we are wanting God's stuff more than we're wanting him. And I'm telling you today, we've got to turn away. We've got to realize that I need to put some salt into it. Because God, God is not just going to suddenly show up. The Bible says it like this. If you will draw near to him, he will draw near to you. You're saying, I'm distant from God. Maybe it's time we start putting the effort in, the hope in, the prayer in, the time in. Because if you'll draw near to him, he's going to draw near to you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He's waiting on you to take that first step. What are you putting into it? And finally, in order to heal from drinking bad water, we need to listen to what God is saying. That's what Elisha said. So he says, bring me a new bowl. He gets the salt. And then he says, and the Lord says. Because it is God's word alone that will purify the water and heal people in the moment of crisis. Maybe you're in a crisis right now. Maybe you're, maybe you're in the battle of your life. Maybe you're in the struggle of your life. Maybe you're, maybe you're in this fight and you are right now going, I don't know how we're going to make it. And you're listening to all the other voices. You're listening to all the other things. You're, you're getting pushed back and forth, to and fro. And you're listening to everyone else and everything else. But it's not about what they say that matters as much as it is about what God says. And finding that source, finding that moment of saying, I'm going to listen to what God is saying. Because when the people listened to what God was saying, Elisha had a new bowl, Elisha had salt. That wasn't what was going to make the entire difference. The entire difference that was made in the source of the water was when Elisha says, And the Lord said, Today I am purifying the water. And from that day until this day, the water has remained pure. You can bring the salt. You can bring a new bowl. But if you don't have the word of God, it's going to remain contaminated. We've got to get back. This is why the gospel is so important. Jesus says it like this in John 7 and 37 on the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty may come to me and anyone who believes in me may come and drink for the scriptures declare rivers of water will flow from his heart. Jesus standing up it's like if you would just realize that you've been drinking from the wrong source this entire time. I am it. And if you'll come and drink from me, your life will be changed. You'll be free. You'll be healed from drinking from toxic 
water sources. You'll be healed from drinking bad water if you will come and drink from the fountain of life. Isaiah says it like this in 12 and 2. It says, see, God has come to save me. I will trust him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. And with joy, with joy, with joy, you will drink deeply from the fountain of salvation. I'm praying this for you today, that God would renew you. Maybe that's where you're at. You're sitting there going, I've drank from some bad water sources, but I just need a renewal. Maybe you've been stagnant for a little too long. Maybe you've held back. Maybe you just haven't felt the presence of God like you used to, and you're wondering, is God there? Have I done something wrong? Am I doing something that's, that, that is counterculture. What, what is going on in my life? And, and you're sitting there thinking and praying and wondering where God is. And I've just come to tell someone here today that God is asking you, is calling you to a moment of renewal. And all it takes is getting focused back on the gospel. The gospel is the good news. Look at what Jesus has done for you. That doesn't change because of your circumstance. The gospel never changes It only changes you. That's the gospel. It changes us. It changes our perspective. And it's getting back to focusing on who and what Jesus is and what he's done for us. I want to pray for you. And maybe this is your first time you've listened to the whole thing. You're like, yeah, I've been drinking some bad water and I need need new water. I need to be renewed. Maybe, Maybe you've been away from the Lord and You want to find your way back and you've been drinking from bad water sources and today you're saying, I'm done. I need that source to dry up so I can drink again from the fountain of living water. I want to pray for you. I want to pray a renewal in your life. New hope, new dreams, new desires, a a refreshing. That's what the water of this living God is all about. Will you pray with me today? Father, I thank you so much for this word. And God, today, thank you for letting us understand that maybe the source we've been drinking from has contaminated our life, our decisions, our efforts. So today, we ask that you would give us a new mind, a new heart, and a new spirit. That the truth of your word would be like salt. Would it heal the water? Would it heal the source that we've been drinking from? And God, today, we don't want to listen to any other voice but yours. So I want to give you my life. I want to give you my hopes, my dreams. I want to give you who I am, all the broken things, all the messed up things, all the toxic things. I want to just give that to you. Will you make me a new person today? God, today, would you forgive me of any sin I've been a part of? Would you forgive me from any wrongdoings that I've done? And I ask that you would come into my life and make me new. Today, I declare and confess that you are my Lord and my Savior, and I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that with me, guess what? The door has just welcomed, the door's opened wide and Jesus has welcomed you into the family. Guess what? You've made a fresh start. And this is just the beginning of all the great things God has for you. And if you said yes to Jesus, we want to celebrate that with you and say congratulations, welcome to the family. We can't wait to see all that God has for the best future you could ever imagine is waiting for you in this journey called faith. So here's what I want you to do. If you made that fresh start, I want you to comment below, direct message us, and we want to reach out to you, help you any way that we can, encourage you and support you in this journey. Encounter family, we're so glad that you had joined us today. Our prayer and our hope is that you would be healed from drinking bad water and your life would be set on a trajectory of the best things that God has for you. Let's remember to encounter God and encounter people as we build his church together this year.
What an amazing word from God. Our prayer is that it impacted you as much as it's impacted us here at Encounter. So if this has changed your life, please like and subscribe to our page. Uh, also, you can message below this video and just connect with us. You can also connect with us on Facebook. And if you've given your life over to Jesus, we want to know about it. So you can direct message us on Facebook. There's a lot of ways that you can connect with us on our website. So we thank you so much for tuning in. And we're just hoping that you have a great day and that God blesses you throughout your week.